Previously on A Body in Progress. Complete moron. Strongly suggest my hand placement is doing that. Drop, grab it, stand up. This is part two of a tutorial on how to execute the bench press, the deadlift, and the squat. It started in episode 43, so make sure you catch that if you have not already. And so now we continue with instruction on how to deadlift, already in progress. I noticed that contrary to how Mark had trained me, every power lifter there, when he approached the deadlift, went down, gripped the bar, and did all of his setting up in the lower position, in the crouched position making sure his feet were ready, making sure his grip was ready, and then executing the deadlift. So I wrote to Mark and said, is this, is this something I should be paying attention to? And here was his advice. He said, no, that wastes your energy. When you go down and you're in a crouched position, your, your muscles are activated now. Your muscles are being used. And so the people who go down and prepare themselves when they're down there, are using up vital lifting energy before they even have a chance to lift the bar. He said, stand up, get ready from there. When you're ready, drop, grab it, stand up. And uh, I just, a couple nights ago, tested that theory. I thought, I'm, I'm going to find out. So I approached the bar, I crouched down, I just kind of simulated staying down there for several seconds as if I'm getting ready. I was already ready, but, uh, and then I grabbed the bar and I tried to stand up and it was hard. And so then I waited about a minute, minute and a half. I went back with the same amount of weight. I tried it again, Mark's way, which is the way I've been doing, but just to compare. And it was so much easier. Um, so that is my recommendation, is do it exactly as I just taught you. Get your arms ready, know where that bar is. And again, that's something you just kind of have to learn uh, over time as you, as you get practice doing this. And then drop, grab that bar and go. Now, when you drop, um, this is another this is another mind game. This is something you actually have to focus on to get it right. The glutes uh, go backwards. Pop those backwards. Don't think of it as dropping straight down. Don't think of it as the knees doing the work. The knees should not extend out over the feet. If, if uh, I don't think I have a shot of this. If you've got your toes, can I do this? Um, uh, okay. <laughs> There's the knee. There's the upper body. There's the knee. The knee should not bend out. I, you can't see it very well. Anyway, the, it should not end. Should not extend. Somebody else on YouTube can, <laughs> can show you better. But don't come forward with the knees. Go backwards with the buttocks, um, and and so that it's almost like you're going into a sitting position. Like there's a chair right behind you, and you're going to sit. The 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 buttocks go back. The uh, upper legs start to go toward horizontal and you go straight down now what you what you don't ever want to do in any part of this lift from the beginning to the end is lower the upper body to reach the bar you keep the upper body in a slightly slanted position forward enough that you can grab the bar and get it around your knees but just bring that all straight down and keep it stiff and tight uh, some people say emphasize really arching it backwards really you know extend yourself keep that tight keep your head up so that you aren't tempted to curve the spine. Be focused at least straight out, if not upwards. Gripping the bar is not a matter of just reaching down with a double overhanded grip and lifting. If you do that, gravity is fighting against you and you'll end up with an accidental uh, forearm workout because your, your fingers are now working to hold on to that bar in spite of everything. And the bar will have the advantage because all it has to do is unwrap those fingers. 
So as you lift heavier and heavier, you want to reach down and have one hand underhand and the other hand overhand. And that way, no matter which way the bar tries to unroll one hand, it's actually rolling up the other one. So you, uh, you remove one obstacle to holding on to that bar successfully by doing an overhand, underhand combo. Grab that bar, grab it quick, grab it tight, and then push up. Push with those knees, uh, with the, uh, not the knees, push with the quads. Push with the quads, the glutes, uh, push with all of your leg muscles to come straight up. And once you get back up, then you do bring the hips back in so that you come to a fully locked standing position. The big problem, if you try to come up with a curved spine, your spine is not a strong element of your body. And yet it manages to contain just about every nerve ending you need for life. So please, please, please use your back muscles to pull that spine straight. Do not arch and, and let and let anything like that happen. Uh, and don't don't do what's called flat backing, where your knees basically go straight up, but your back doesn't follow. Okay, from your hips up, that needs to be one unit when you do the deadlift. You push all of this unit straight up using the legs. It's not the legs go up and then the back does the rest of the work. You, you've got this unit, push it all the way up with the legs and then do that last little bit with the hips. If you uh, improperly execute a deadlift, you can permanently damage the spine and your life. Uh, so I want to stress again, yes I've told you and yes I've showed you some video footage and yes I've been doing it now for four years with no injuries, but if you want to try the deadlift, get someone to teach you in person and check your form and, and point out anything you're doing wrong. Um, I, uh, Bill Haynes showed me how to do a deadlift years ago and then Mark gave me a really good solid training in it uh, in 2017. Um, otherwise, I probably wouldn't even do it. I, before Mark, actually, I didn't even like the deadlift. I rarely ever did it. Um, and now, it's my strongest lift, so there you go. Uh, but again, I, and I, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, get the deadlift supervised by someone in person first. Get the deadlift supervised by someone in person first. Get the deadlift supervised by someone in person first. And number three, the squat. This is the one uh, I still hate. I used to not like the deadlift and now I do. I have never liked the squat and never will and that's probably why it's the weakest. It's the one I find the easiest to make excuses to not do. And now that I've given you that kind of downer outlook on it, how to do a squat. Uh, you're going to need a squat rack of some kind. The bar has to be up so that you can get under it easily. Uh, I have found that with the squat rack at the Redmond Athletic Club, or with the, uh, this this isn't, I guess this is a squat rack, then they have squat cages. Um, but in this pre-manufactured squat rack, I find that this second setting that comes right to that level on my chest is the perfect height for me. Uh, if you use uh, one of the cages where you have adjustable heights, you will have to kind of figure that out over time, what works best. You want to be able to get under it, get it on your shoulders, I'll, I'll give you the details here in a minute, but get it on your shoulders and stand up with very little effort so that it's it's high enough that you don't you aren't performing a squat to get it into an upright position <laughs> to start. But it's also low enough that when you're done and stressed out and your muscles just want that bar off of you, uh, the, the handles for it, the rests for it, are not so high that you are having trouble getting it there. To get into the starting position for a squat, step under the bar, put your hands onto the bar, and I would suggest, again, about shoulder width apart. Some people go a little wider, but the wider you go, the less leverage you have if that bar starts to tip it starts to roll backwards off of your back for any reason. When your arms are just right about here, just kind of a natural grip, like you're going to do a, a military press, um, that gives you the strength to really hold it there up against your body, keep it in position. Now, you don't want to rest it on your spine, on your neck. It kind of looks like it is if you just casually see someone doing a squat, you go, okay, I put the bar on my neck. No. 
you want to get it off the spine and onto the trapezius muscles. And some guys have really built these up and they have the just they have their own natural <laughs> built-in squat rest right there. Uh, you want it on those muscles instead of on delicate and valuable spine bones. To lift off of the rack, get under the bar so that your torso is vertical. And this goes back to what I said about the deadlift. If you make your spine do the work, you can injure the spine. So you don't want to just step under the bar and from that bent over position, try to get it off the rack. You want to get your, your body underneath so that you're standing straight so that then your hips and your quad muscles do all the work of actually getting that bar into a standing position. Once you've done that, then you back up, get away from the rack because you're going to need to come down and you don't want the bar hitting the supports. That's just pretty straightforward there. And now uh, plant your feet, get them in the right position. What is the right position? For a basic squat, I will again go with about shoulder width apart. There are variations, again, as to how wide to put your legs. Some people actually suggest uh, the feet and knees closer together than what I do, um, but I've discovered that I can't go down low enough in that position because I have a rather large abdomen at this point, and what it does is it presses up against the knees and prevents me from going even lower. So I spread the legs so that the abdomen can actually settle between the thighs. This is gross. <laughs> and I can get down lower. Okay, so that's your, that's your foot stance. And again, I have that crooked right foot. Uh, and the way it's built onto the ankle and therefore built onto the knee, if I just go straight down from there, I lose the support. So when I go down, I have to actually mentally focus on keeping my right leg pushed out from where it wants to go on purpose. Similar to the deadlift is the idea that you don't want this to be uh, an exercise that strains your shins and pushes your knees out over your toes. This is about the quad muscles. This is about the hamstrings and glutes. And so to make sure that you do it right, you work those muscles and you don't get injured, you start by moving the hips backwards. And if, in fact, if you do it right, that bar should come straight down and straight back up again because you'll move the hips out of the way and then everything just comes down and then you, and then you push with the legs and you come back up. If you try to move the knees, you're, you're going to get a bar that, that does not come straight down. It does not come down the way it should. And you're going to put a lot of stress on the parts of your leg that don't need the stress. All right, you want the stress off of your knees, off of your ankles. You want it all in the muscles. You want the muscles doing all the work. So hips back, down you come. Also like the deadlift, you are looking at least straight out, if not also up, and you are focused on keeping the back tight. Do not let it come forward. Do not let the spine round at all. All right, keep it back. Keep the back tight. Just like the deadlift, the back isn't or shouldn't be doing any exercise. If your back is doing the exercise, you have a problem. So like the deadlift, you've got the bar on your on your traps back behind you. That whole upper unit just comes down and then those legs push it back up, push for everything they're worth. Uh, here's a piece of advice that I learned from experience. I talked about looking straight ahead, keeping your head up. Don't turn your head. I remember one night I was doing the squat and I came back up. I was even in a standing position. So you'd think, well, there's not a lot of stress on any part of your body. You're holding the weight, but you aren't in a really awkward or dangerous position. And I don't remember why. I don't remember if something felt off or something caught my attention. All I remember is that I turned my head and I felt a river of mild, but it was there, a river of electric shock run down through my back. And I, I just, I snapped my head straight back forward and said, do not turn your head, Brian. I don't know what that was, but I do not want an injury. So um, yeah, I think I, I, I am not a doctor and nobody has told me this. Going from experience, my thought is that when you turn the head, you are now moving bones that shouldn't be moving when they need to be locked and tight and upright. Um, which reminds me, even as I say that, had a similar experience on the bench press. 
Um, you want to keep your head for all three lifts. You want to keep your head, spine, back, one nice straight column as you perform all of these exercises. One of the raging debates about the squat is how low to go. I would suggest the minimum, and this is true for powerlifting competitions as well, the minimum would be get your thighs parallel to the floor. This is not to say that if you didn't go that low, let's say you only went from 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 start if 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 from start to if, if from upright excuse me from upright to thighs parallel to the floor is 100%. If you only went 75% and then stood back up and you did that re repeatedly, you'd still exercise your muscles. You just wouldn't exercise them as much. So, you know, there's there's no harm in stopping halfway down. Um, but you just you aren't you aren't getting as much workout as you could get so get the thighs at least to parallel to the floor and in my condition with my flexibility and my body fat in the way that is uh, that's a pretty good standard for me um, plus the heavier the weight the harder I, harder time I have getting back up um, if you can manage it and I would say start with really light weights um, practice going even lower um, the expression is all the way to the grass. And there's a rhyming word that goes with that that when I was a kid would have gotten me sent to my room. Uh, your butt to the grass. And to this day, I still don't even like that phrase. So, I know somebody's going to send me a message and go, oh, get over it, Brian. But, yeah, I'm old fashioned. I almost feel like compared to the bench press, I have underserved the deadlift and the squat. Um,. That's all I can think to say about the squat. I think I will leave it there. I think, I, I think I've adequately described the beginnings. That wraps up this introductory lesson to the bench press, the deadlift, and the squat. If that was informative to you, let me know. Uh, and if you were the one guy who asked for it and you found that to be worth the wait, um, let me know. And if a few months from now you are stronger for having learned how to do these things and this video was instrumental to getting you started, I'd love to know that too. And so that is everything I want to say. Just double checking. Yep. See you next time on A Body in Progress. The original plan for everything you just saw was that I would create the videos, send copies of them to Mark Prickett, since I use his name and reference his teaching throughout this. I wanted, I wanted him to be okay with what I put out there for the public. And then he would give me feedback. Did, was I instructing you correctly? Was there anything I said that was incorrect? Um... But because I also wanted to get these videos loaded before June ended, just a personal deadline, I was running out of time and I went ahead and loaded episode 43 before actually checking with him. And then I sent him the link, he watched it, and he did have to say, he, he had this to say. Um, I agree with about 75% of it. And then he proceeded to give me some notes. I noted that uh, nothing in his notes was uh, was saying that I was wrong. In fact, I, I asked him specifically after that. I said, is there anything in the videos that's wrong? Should I take it down and make the changes? He said, it's fine. Just make a note in a, in a later video. So uh, I've got just a few seconds in this uh, episode 44 to point this out. Um, and and I, I just want to stress, Mark did not get to approve these before I loaded them. He seemed to generally agree with the information I put in there. Uh, but I take responsibility for what I said and what I posted, um, and I will also repeat and stress, as I said at least a couple of times, if you really want to do these things, this was a beginner lesson. If you really want to do these lifts, go get a trainer, someone to train you in person and make sure you're doing it right and you don't get injured. And if you happen to live in the northwest corner of Oregon, hire Mark Prickett. <laughs>